Hey, what's up, everybody? You're listening to Cannabis Karaoke, where we ask you to grab the mic and tell your story. Get inside info from today's most interesting cannabis pioneers, and from the first note to the end of the song, listen up as you get to hear the stories of success on Cannabis Karaoke. (laughs) You just screwed up my whole intro. Hey, what's up? You're listening to Cannabis Karaoke. We're bringing you another, like, hard-hitting, fact-finding, none of that podcast. (laughs) Uh, We're going to be hosting this today with yours truly, Danny Keith. I've got a co-host. We're going to leave him with just his first name because we don't, he might be part of the protection plan that we don't want to expose. So Mark is going to be co-hosting with us. And we have like probably one of our best uh, guests to date on the uh, good old here cannabis karaoke show. We've got Ungayo Bilam. He's a comedian, influencer, host of Bonfire, and a frequent guest on Getting Dug With High. And I heard a little secret. Your parents were Black Panthers. My parents were Black Panthers. I'm half Panther, half hippie. Oh, my God. <laughs> I'm not even going to make a funny so joke at that because... Embrace your dichotomies. Yeah, that's a broad uh, little statement right there. Uh, you know, we accept everybody, but we're not afraid to kick a little ass. It's right? Like, You're like, what's right. I will be crying and hugging a tree while whipping your ass at the same time. Uh, some people cry fight quite effectively. <laughs> Our co-host happens to actually frequently. He uh, he's a tri fighter. <laughs> he hails out of the uh, out of the LA area I'm as the, the prize cry fighter of the area. Years. Oh, go ahead. What do you say? I was gonna say he's the he's holding the championship for twenty seven years being the cry fighter. Yeah, yeah, cry fighting <laughs> champion heavyweight division. I do what I can. <laughs> Do what you can. Do what you can. Uh, I assume you're familiar with the Marquis of Queensbury rule, sir. <laughs> That's Rump, hilarious. Rump. So, Ngayo, what are you doing right now? I mean, we, we just... We right were... now, I'm sitting on my couch uh, looking at my weed supplies, which are lavish. Uh, I wish you could come over and not share a joint with me, but we could each have our own. Ooh. Mm-hmm. Is it like a... So okay. I just got back... I was in Spain for three days last week, so I'm really kind of in uh, self-isolation mode just to be safer around everybody. So I just got back. I rolled up the Oregon coast uh, for about a week because there's nobody out there, and uh, those guys don't want to touch me anyway. And uh, it was very beautiful and and lonely and wonderful at the same time. But it's weird because the second day I was up there – uh, or the third day I was up there, all the restaurants shut down for you can't go in and eat, so you had to get everything taken out. So I ate a lot of fancy food in my car. <laughs> <laughs> and DoorDash is, I think I'm a premium member now. Wow. <laughs> right? Is that, nice. we were talking a little bit about that off the, off the air. Do you, I mean, at what point do those services, are they deemed essential as well? Is a DoorDash driver now an essential service? Restaurants, uh, food delivery, yeah, those are all essential. Cannabis clubs, still essential, of course, because we want people to stay calm during this time. And, you know, you don't know what kind of weird disease the the underground weed man has. And uh, so, yeah, no, those are all still good. I think the golf course can still stay open. You're still allowed to walk around. Just don't touch anyone or talk to anyone. So no making friends. (laughs) (laughs) No more high fives. No, no. No more God, hugs? No. No high fives. Although I did see um, um, a meme called the Corona Sutra, and it was six positions where your faces were at least a meter and a half away from each other. <laughs> I saw that, too. I actually saw that meme. But then I was thinking, I, that means I got to have a partner, and the wife, I'm, we're already probably borderline divorced after being around me for the last four days straight. So <laughs> I'm going to go for the... <laughs> Maybe there'll be one that comes out for the Solo Sutra guy that can stay away from his own face for more than a meter and a half. Uh, I think as long as you sanitize your dick first. <laughs> I'm clear. Okay. It's going to tingle. <laughs> it's going to tingle a little. It's going to be a little warm. I don't know if you heard. I usually put a little after shave, after shave on the junk. but it's, uh... There has been a, a, quite, a few acci- <laughs> quite a few accidental bathroom crisps crosses let's just say um and if maybe we get run out of time which i don't think we will um i think uh we'll just leave it there that there has been crisscrosses that have taken place in the good old bathroom listen that's better than mistaking the preparation age for the toothpaste dude how did you know that was my (laughs) crisscross happened while i was traveling happened while i was traveling wife was pregnant 
packed my bag super late night, got in the shower, started brushing my teeth. By the way, that shit foams up considerably more than toothpaste does. That's the first. <laughs> that is the first indication Did you really that say you that shit when referring to preparation. <laughs> yeah. Oh, double double entendre. Uh, that stuff foams up so quick that that's the first. It didn't. You know, it's funny. You would think it had a horrible taste. It it was kind of tasteless, but I looked like a like a, a rabbitous dog. Like my, I had like a beard of foam, and it was I. Now to this day, thirteen years later, I'm still double checking that it's toothpaste that I'm sure. using, not I'm sure your, your gums didn't itch all day. No, 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 they did not. They didn't bleed either. They were doing well. <laughs> Good. Good. So, so, Mark, Good. you uh, you facilitated this interview. Talk to us. Uh, talk to us a little bit about how you guys came to meet and like your relationship and uh, yeah. So yeah. yeah, Mark, talk about our relationship. <laughs> Wait a minute. Hold on. What is, what show is this? Therapy with <laughs> cannabis karaoke. So that ninety day weed on say. <laughs> oh gosh, how long have we known each other, and guy? What's it been since the early nineties at this point, right? Early nineties. So it's almost thirty years now, I think. Wow. Yeah, I believe wow. that we met at a uh, at a barbecue. Yes, yes. I watched you. So it was a, like it was a bring your own meat barbecue and uh everybody rushed to put their things on the grill and mark waited until the coals were perfect and grilled one fucking piece of chicken expertly and i was like <laughs> i gotta be friends with this dude because he knows what's going on he like he exhibits patience and care and grace and it was one piece of chicken and he's pretty mm-hmm. funny he's, he's probably the most well-adjusted person i know uh, which I don't know if that speaks better to him or badly of me. But that's, that's how it is. Well, you know, I, I, it's a pleasure to get such acknowledgement from a guy who's got such a great culinary palate. Man. And guy was like a masterful cook. And guy, and guy oh, was not only a good cook you. for Solo, but he's a good cook for 100 people, which he's done oh. a few times. But then we throw, we throw some big parties for sure. Fourth of July I used to get out of control uh, at the Guerrero Street House when I lived out there. Hell yeah, that was some good for times. Sure. Good times, and we were in a band together. We opened for Zap Mama and Eric B and Fishbone and, and not Eric B, we were Kim and mm-hmm. Black Eyed Peas, Outkast. Jesus, we, we've done some things, man. We've done some big things for sure. On 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 like junior rock star level, we've been pretty big deal. Minor league rock star. I'm here for it. Yeah, yeah I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> that's, it's interesting that you guys are kind of touching all these things because as I'm looking at your Wikipedia, by the way, I don't know if you know, but you have a Wikipedia. Do you keep that updated yourself? or? No. You know, a couple of years ago, I was complaining on Twitter. I was like, guys, I don't have a Wikipedia page. And then someone wrote one for me. Yeah, it's pretty informative. Um, you it actually, was fairly accurate. I was very impressed. I, I'm hoping so because I'm about to reference some things. Uh, you... Uh, <laughs> No, that's a lie. Mark, <laughs> fake news. Mark was uh, referencing your Cooking on High in 2018, one of the shows that you uh, participated in. Uh, talk, yes. Talk about that a little bit. What is that? I mean, we all pretty much cook while we're high, I think. But I think yeah, you may have done something a little different. It's Cooking on High. Right. Uh, it's kind of, it was kind of like a chop. It's like a cooking competition, but with uh, weed-infused food. And we had, you know, some uh, quote-unquote celebrity guests who would judge the food and then Get very stoned off of the food, of course, because it's got weed in it. And uh, I was the weed expert, and so I would come in and introduce the strain. Today we're cooking with Amnesia Haze, which is a sativa known for its uplifting effects and slightly citrusy, piney taste. Ooh, pardon me, taste. Uh, and it, it was a good time, most definitely. We shot that in 2016, and it was supposed to be a web series, so they paid me web series money. And then it disappeared, and then two years later, it showed up on Netflix. And I was like, "Hey, that's cool. Can I get some Netflix money?" And they're like, "No." That's so funny. <laughs> they waited. They're like, "We'll just you signed, signed a web series contract." They say, "We'll just sit paid. on this till your shit expires, huh? and then we're gonna launch it." They said they just sat on it. They're like, uh, and they put like a little marker on their calendar. They're all November fourth. He will have zero access to this, so let's launch it November fifth. That's how they do it. Yeah, they get you to produce, uh, um, and then uh, then you get nothing. I'm, I, you know, I'm sure something happened. I don't know, but listen, it doesn't matter because I went from 
4,300 Instagram followers to, I think I have 75,000 Instagram followers, 77,000 Instagram followers now. So it definitely helped. Well, I also think, you know, people don't recognize you by your voice at the moment. Once we launch it and put up the picture, everybody has, you know, it's funny after we met at Emerald Cup, which by the way, you slayed. um, Oh, thank you. All of a sudden I'm like, holy fuck, that guy's everywhere. Like now I know why I felt so comfortable listening to you and watching you perform is because that's kind of, you are pretty much known as uh, if you, if, if a guy is hosting an event, you're like, that's the event you should be going to. I mean, you kind of have, thank you. I'm not sure if that was a purposeful uh, path, but it's what's become your path. I believe. It, oh, you know? yeah. 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 You know, I kind of, for the longest time I fought against the whole, uh, just being known as a weed comic sort of thing because I, I'm a stand-up comic, stand-up comic. Like, yes, I talk about weed and sex a lot, of course, but, you know, Eskimos talk about snow. Um, <laughs> but uh, I have a lot of different topics, but that was like the one, and I, you know, I did a lot of weed activism. I do a lot of weed activism, so that's really what I became known for, and I just decided, fuck it, I'm going to embrace it, and uh, and it's working out pretty well so far. I mean, at least now, like back in the day when weed was illegal, all I heard was, all you do is talk about weed, blah, 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 blah. And now they're like, hey, we need somebody who talks about weed. That can, <laughs> right. that can actually hold a conversation. Right. So they and... called Doug Vincent. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then they call me when Doug says no. Um, the guy was the go-to yeah. conference host for weed or festival this or any true. event. He's the, the yeah. top, top of the top. Well, it's, thank you, thank you so much. It's hard to keep. To just say. It's hard to keep the attention span of people that are super high. That's number one. Man, I try to tell people. You almost have to be like you're in class, y'all. Kids, kids, hey, hey, fuckers, up here. Eyes up here. Look at me. Let's go. Let's pay attention. We're doing Uh, the thing right here. It's not just that. It's also that um, sometimes they take you very literally when they're stoned, right? Like, uh, I had a friend who who has a joke about, you know, be on stage, he's do the, like, me and my girlfriend just broke up. And everybody would go, oh, oh, no. And they think it real. She's like, well, no, we break up every week for the sake of this fucking joke, dude. So relax. Uh, like, Calm down. So you take him down an emotional <laughs> man, path? you're going to be okay, man. You need a hug, bro. That's funny. It sucks. That's funny. It, it is true, it's though. It's just one of those things. People get too high, dude, and they yeah. get in their own head, and you got to just make sure you don't drill too deep into that emotional uh, baggage that they're all dealing with at that particular moment. Right, right. Also, stoners sometimes get quiet. Like, if you, we used to do um, a lot of shows at, at, at cannabis clubs back when cannabis clubs were more like social clubs sure. back in the day when they first started out. That was, I think that's something we really need to get back to is more social clubs. Um, and, and, and a place for people to sit around and smoke weed, like a coffee shop or whatnot. Just a, a weed-friendly co-working environment. Oh, yeah. Nobody you know, the guy and I that. used to do, do it. And we yeah. used to uh, play up at the, the clubs in San Francisco as a band, and then guy would do comedy sets in between. Yeah, I would open for myself. That's and, right. Uh, that was, uh, <laughs> we, did the, we did that one at Champs uh, on Church Street one time back mm-hmm. in the early days of Hash Oil. That's the one where Alan almost passed out. Yes, the bass player. <laughs> yeah, that was the highest I had been in a million years, I think. Yes. And I had a show at Cobb's Comedy Club that night, and I was on the bus to the show thinking, like, oh, my God, I'm too high to perform. I don't even know if I can go on stage. And oh, then that's I killed funny. It. But Yeah, that, that but was yeah. back in the day when we, uh, you know, you do you do dab hits, cold, cold water hits off of, like, a coal right. and a hose. Off a coal with a hose, with a whip. That's right, with a whip. Right, that's right. Now it's all fancy with your rigs and your stuff. I always say that. You kids with your fancy dab rigs, we had two hot knives and a broken wine bottle. That's how we used to smoke hash. That's right. Dude, they break out the, they break out the welding torch nowadays. It's like I, I, I'm never – it's like be careful. I'm glad you say welding torch and not crack torch. Well, I didn't want to be <laughs> judgmental. You know, it's a multi-purpose torch, but it definitely could weld with it too. I mean – I think one of the first times I like legitimately dabbed was so I'm not dude. I'll be honest with you. Dabbing makes me, I just, there's certain things I can't do. And dabbing is probably close to, if I want to function, if I don't want to function, sure. I'm cool. But I can't even imagine trying to do stand up comedy being dabbed out. I would just be, I'd be having I, a conversation in my head, 
thinking that it was coming out of my yeah. mouth, looking at the audience, wondering why they're not laughing, you know? You know, I rarely do dabs and perform. I always tell these guys, they're like, hey, man, you want to dab? I'm like, well, it's just going to make me quiet and somewhat telepathic. Right. And, uh, <laughs> like, you guys hired me to be witty and present. Right? I mean, if you just want me to sit in the corner and eat and create backstories about everybody I see, yeah, sure, I'll do a dab. But if you really want me to talk and pay attention and thank the sponsors, maybe just a nice hybrid or a sativa for now. That's funny. <laughs> would be yeah, yeah. good. Although, me and Doug, me and Doug Denson did a show. He did a show. He produced a show at the Punchline like four or five years ago on 710, which is dab day, right? On July 10th, because... 710 upside down and backwards is oil. And so the dabber. Damn, I've always wondered what that meant. That. Yeah, yeah. And so um, oh, we hooked up earlier in the day and we went to a couple of clubs. And there's one who had a social lounge. And so, you know, everybody's dabbing. And since you're hanging out with Doug Benson, they want to give you the biggest, most giant fucking globs possible, right? And uh, so we were. So Suited. And I had a good show, but it was very disjointed. There was not a lot of, it wasn't smooth. You're like self evaluating your still show. Funny. Was, oh my God. There was a lot of, yeah, self referential treatment and trying to remember what joke was next. And did I talk about this one already? <laughs> <laughs> that's that's some stuff, funny shit right was, there. Tell the same joke three times. Time. They're like, what? Hey, uh, oh, someone raised their know, hand. They're all, yo, dude. Record skipping. Let's move it on. Moving on. Yeah, right. <laughs> exactly. Do do people get all bummed out with you if like they offer you something and you're too high and don't want to smoke? Uh, sometimes, but I don't give in to peer pressure. So uh, I'm an adult now, and uh, I don't um, I, I don't have to compete like that. When I was a younger cat, I would just smoke everybody's weed constantly all the time. But now I'm like, no, man, I'm, I'm good. I got to talk. Uh, although sometimes when I'm at festivals and things and I feel like I'm expected to smoke all the weed constantly all the time, I will secretly take a little CBD, which blocks the, uh, keeps you from getting too high. <laughs> smoke weed. That's putting in the cheat code. All day. That's the truth. Yeah, put in the cheat code. I'm going to drink this CBD coffee and I'm going to be awake and not as stoned all day. Isn't that the beautiful thing about the plant, man? It has... It's I, you know you don't you wish you could do that with alcohol like all of a sudden you're like okay I'm done being fucked up I want to be sober so I can drive home, it's like we got the right. we got the benefit of that with cannabis people don't realize it when you get super high and you start getting super yeah. paranoid with alcohol now you got to do some cocaine oh yeah I gotta straighten up dude give me a bump yeah that's the equalizer you're just high in both f- functions of the word you're s- super sped up and can't really see properly that's the bad combo yeah i don't know i've never done coke so i don't really know how it works yeah, me neither um so anyways <laughs> no but i'm but i'm serious <laughs> me too <laughs> <laughs> sure <laughs> one does not merely do one line of coke i believe you i would know i turned into a nerd when the cocaine comes out I'm like you guys i got violin practice that's ah. funny you are a musician. I, I mean, say. we, you, you know, you're obviously a great comedian. Um, having a, an amazing time with you right now, dude. My fucking stomach hurts. And but, yeah. You're, by you're, the way, please stream my albums. I need as much passive income as fucking possible right well, now. Well, we'll make please. sure we promote that to the seven <laughs> One's people that are here. The other's called Weed Insects. Huh? We'll we'll make sure we promote this to the seven people that are listening. Good. I appreciate it. Yeah. You were saying I I cut you off. What was your the name of your albums? Uh, Weed and Sex is the first album, and Weedier and Sexier is the second album. All right. I'll make sure. So, of course, the third album will be Weediest and Sexiest. (laughs) Are we working on that now? You got new material? I do. I have, like, three new jokes. How many? uh, Three. Are they each 20 minutes? (laughs) No, not yet. (laughs) (laughs) Which is so funny. My show is so fast-paced and... uh, you know, when I, when I first started, I was very inspired, um, not by the jokes, but by the pacing of Robin Williams, right? Because he just comes out and it's boom, boom, bang, 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 boom, 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 go, 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 go. And so uh, I'm I'm still very fast paced. And then I saw Ron Shock, and he's and then Franklin and Jai, and they're just both really, really slow, and they take their time. And so I tried to slow down a little. And so sometimes I feel like I'm going really slow, but then I watch the tape again. I'm like, man, that's still. 
really fast. But you know, what are you gonna do? That's just how who's, that's how it works for me. This, who's the slowest? The comedy chat. Yeah, I can't. I can't, uh, I can't. I can't go that slow. Stephen Wright yeah. is pretty slow. Uh, Margaret Smith, uh, she was also awesome, and and uh, she had good pacing. Um, but I don't think you know. Stephen Wright is still kind of boom, boom, boom because it's all one-liners, right? There's a lot of one-liners. So while he's talking kind of slow and his effect is very mellow, uh, his jokes still come at a fairly rapid pace as opposed to, say, someone like Franklin Ajay or, or Rob Shock where it takes them forever to set up the joke, but then when they pay it off, it's monstrous and you laugh for a couple of minutes. <laughs> is the jackpot payoff? Right, right. I mean, and it's got to pay off, right? It's got to, and that's the risk you take when you're, you know, if you're talking fast and the joke doesn't work, fuck it. There's another one coming. It's like the SAT, don't dwell, right? But uh, if you're talking slow and you tell it, if you get to that slow ass punchline and they don't laugh for 35 seconds, uh, (laughs) it can can be lonely. (laughs) Where's where's that fine line to of the waiting and then the like, oh, we better just move on. Yeah, that's where it comes up to the time. And Bob Hope used to say that he, but if he knew the joke was funny, uh, but the crowd didn't laugh right away, he would just wait. He would just stand there and fucking wait about <laughs> sometimes. And sometimes you have to do that. Sometimes, And, and, and this is one of those things. Uh, it often depends on the shape of the room. Right, sure. Well, it's also sometimes so you... the weirdest thing. Speaking oh. of your your comedy stuff, how, what's what's your like outlook for gigs at the moment? Did everybody cancel on you? Did they reschedule? What's the there, latest? There are no gigs. How can you have fifty people in a room when you're not allowed to have fifty people in a room, or two hundred people, or four hundred people? So everyone, all the comedy clubs, pretty much all the comedy clubs are shut down. Uh, all the clubs are fucked. People have been stuck, right? Because it's not like everybody's got a giant four hundred one k that they can pull out of all these road comics and shit, mm. and. Um, uh, so it's really kind of on hiatus right now. And uh, so everybody's going to have to be a writer. So now there's more competition for writers, which is great, I guess. <laughs> and it's just, it's a wild, it's a wild time. I was trying to think like, maybe I'll just uh, put my little sound system in my car and just go house to house. <laughs> 10 bucks. I'll tell you jokes. I'll stand on your porch. You guys sit in the living rooms. I'll tell you jokes. I love it. For 10 minutes. Just get on, just <laughs> yeah, get on next door. Right, just get on next door and tell them jokes. Maybe I'll put a flatbed truck and put a little stage on it, and then roll out somewhere where there's a lot of houses, and then <laughs> post my cash app. Yeah, you uh, just some blues, people are like blues. here's a hundred bucks. Get off my fucking block. <laughs> <laughs> they just pay you to go away. Okay, fine, cool. Fine, that's fine. Either way, either way. Dude, it might you come. I mean, it might come off. to you that. Maybe keep my clothes off. And Gail, it might. I mean, like I'm. I'm sitting here listening. You know, I've interviewed quite a few people over the last couple of days because, like I said, I need something to do. And so I just keep calling up my friends and we keep talking. But some of them are event producers, you know, and they're like thinking about doing virtual events. But I'm sitting here thinking like, okay, how could, you know, comedy is one of the last bastions. I'm a fucking huge, like, I will find the most obscure comics and follow them and, track them and and just i it's one of my weird uh kind of fetishes is i love stand-up comedy it takes so much it's reason I'm fetish you're not quite a chuckle fucker <laughs> the fuck did you just call me? Did, you, did you just call me <laughs> yes what the yeah. hell did you just rock, call me a guy rock, rock stars have rock stars have groupies comics have chuckle fuckers okay right. i'm a chuckle fucker and so Anyways, the reason I named the podcast Cannabis Karaoke is because similar to doing stand-up comedy, you, you often get up and just bomb, right? And so it's su- it's super, no, super hard. No, not me. No, no, no. Not, of course not you. Now you're great. Bomb. But I, so I just go I, – I love <laughs> to watch – Don't me, man. I love to watch comedy, and, I, and comedy is one of the last bastions of activities that kind of requires a live audience. It's, unless, it's really hard to be – without laugh tracks to have the – the the emotional resp- like uh, response to your show, yeah. you know, and it's also hard for the comic because you can't tell uh, what what the crowd is like or, or what they're into, right? But my show is 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 fairly flexible, right? I come out, I tell a couple jokes. Maybe I've been watching the other comic and I see what the crowd is like. Are they kind of smart? Are they kind of dumb? Right. Are they loud? Are they chatty? Like it, it informs 
Wait, did they like the dirty material that this other comic did? Did they like the, the thoughtful, emotional shit? And it informs what, what's going to happen in my set. And so you go up there and there's nobody there to listen. You just, hmm. It affects the timing, too, because you can't feel them, right? It's right. A, it's a relationship. It's a it's a yeah. balancing. Like I'm putting out energy, you guys are putting out energy. I'm reflecting your energy back. You reflect my energy back. It's very metaphysical to me a lot of times at its highest levels. And so if there's no one there to laugh, it's uh, it's just hard to do. Like it's, it's not hard like to work like, the chat room. I you swear it's character. You it's just work the script. It's yeah. probably but the yeah, hardest. How many relies on 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 a response? Yeah, absolutely. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yes. Please. So, speaking of your your canceled events, you just came back from Spain too, right? Yes, I spent three nights in Spain. I got in there on Tuesday, uh, Tuesday night, and uh, I didn't share any joints with anybody. I washed my hands religiously, carried around a bottle. That was right um, when it was kicking off too. And like- wiped everything down. I wiped everything down on the plane. I disinfected the wipes. I was very careful about the whole thing. And they canceled Spanibus the day I got into town, and then they canceled the International Cannabis Business Conference at 2 o'clock in the morning of the day of the conference. Oh, my God. Because, yeah, so so Wednesday, we got everything set up and, and all the stuff, uh, and it was supposed to happen on Thursday. And then late Wednesday night at 2 o'clock in the morning, Spanish time, uh, Trump came on. He's like, everybody needs to come home. And we're like, oh, shit. So I guess we have to cancel this whole thing. So we had to cancel the whole thing. Everybody had to jump on the uh, internet and try to get a flight home. Uh, my flight was for Friday. So I just went to the site and helped people pack up their stuff from a distance. And uh, <laughs> you supervise. I supervised. I supervised. <laughs> and, then, and then I came back and then I came back Friday and the plane wasn't too crowded, but and everybody was very careful. Like everybody had, uh, disinfectant wipes on them and, and hand sanitizer and stuff. I so. thought you were going to be there for an extended period of time because I texted you right away when I heard he was shutting down the flights yeah. and you're like, oh, I'm already here. Fuck it. Uh, listen, I'm hard-headed and stubborn and it has allowed me to be a self-employed stand-up comedian uh, slash pot smoker. Right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But also, you do things like you get to Spain and you're like, fuck it, I budgeted in Spain. I don't have shit to do for two weeks. I'm not really trying to go home and get yeah. back involved in the real world. I'm so And it was hella cheap at that point. You could get the fanciest hotel for 100 euros. You could get a really good hotel for 50 euros. Like a really good one. Not like a fucked up, like a really good hotel for $60. Right? right. So, like, Take advantage. They'll be so happy to see you eat like a king. Right? They'll be, oh, my God, please come in and eat our food. We ordered right. a lot because Spanibus was in town, and it's spring break, and everybody's going to be here. And now we are fucked. Like, the whole world is fucked right now. Well, this is, okay, the people in the world are fucked. The world itself is healing, if you yeah. know what I mean. Yeah, we got right? put in a corner. About how much less pollution we're putting in the air. And, and all these things. And I try not to be super metaphysical about things a lot of times, but you know, if you believe that everything is one and that uh, Mother Earth is a living, breathing entity, you realize how she might want to uh, have people slow down and smooth out for a minute. Mm-hmm. Yep. Go slow. And stop trying to kill her, actively trying to kill her. Mm-hmm. Less stress on the environment, for sure. Way less stress on the environment. Look how clear your air is outside right now. Mm-hmm. Right. What? Uh, just what, 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 what were they smoking on in uh, Spain? What was? It? Was there anything exciting? Um, I may have accidentally secretly brought back some uh, cheese glue, which was really good. And then my boy Francisco also gave me a really nice tangy variant and a Kush variant that I smoked. And then I had a six-hour layover on the way to uh, Barcelona in Amsterdam, so I hopped out. Ran in town. You can get into the into the middle of Amsterdam from the airport twenty minutes on the train. Uh, so I ran in, had some pancakes, smoked a gram of Applejack, which was really nice. It smelled like apples and it tasted like apple, like sweet apple juice, and it had a very strong. It came on really, really strong for like the first twenty minutes. I was like, oh shit, did I smoke too much weed? This is better. <laughs> and then, uh, and then like five minutes after that, it was just a super happy, pleasant. Oh my God, this is really nice. Hey. Hi. But it, it definitely came on hella strong very quick. Although, I feel like 
and I don't know what it is, but uh, Spanish weed gets me higher than American weed. And I'm not saying that Spanish weed is better. I'm just saying that for some strange reason, it, it hits different. It hits me stronger every time. I'm always surprised when I smoke Spanish weed about how high I am off of a couple of hits. And I, think, I don't know if it's just because they, they breed for super THC content, like the CBD is relatively new out there. They're just getting into it uh, in the past year or two. But they also love sativas. They love hazes. Everything is cheese haze and glue haze and amnesia haze and your mom smokes haze and all that. They love a sativas uh, in Spain. I don't know why, but uh, they do. And so I'm generally super buzzy. <laughs> Hey, I want to, um, being a guy that I love the Spanish club systems too. Right. Cause it's not, uh, it's not just like a weed store. It's not like how they have it in California or in a lot of places in the States where you go and you buy your weed. Weed, weed is still technically illegal in Spain. Uh, but you are, it's somewhat decriminalized. So you, you're allowed to be a member of a collective. So you have to join a weed club. It's like 20, 30 euros, depending. But, and someone has to recommend you. You can't just show up. Like you have to have a friend or talk to somebody. Uh, and then you can sit. It's a social club. You can sit. You can lounge. They're, they're all different styles. Some are really kind of like bars or pubs and you watch sports and shit. And some are like co-working spaces. Some are full of flowers and girls. It's, it's a wild um, – it's great. Wow. It's great. You can pick your own kind of spot. It's really, it's really, really nice. I really like the way they do it. I think we should do something similar to that out here. I'm working on it. Nice. I was That's working awesome. on it, but now. Yeah. Hey, it's, it's great. It's great. Hey, and Gallo, so you're a guy that's been, you know, you've, you get to participate in a lot of different ways, uh, with your content. Um, you know, s- the content game has changed considerably. You know, we're seeing, you know, more and more people self-producing their own content shit. You don't even need an app. You don't even need an app in a phone or on a TV anymore. I'm watching my 12 year old kid sling videos all over devices and it's just getting crazier and crazier. What is your thoughts on, what are your thoughts on Quibi? Like as Quibi starts to roll out, when they first started talking about it, everyone was like writing it off. Now Quibi, like people are kind of starting to like pull on a little bit totally took us in a different direction but i wanted your input on that technology and what you thought about that short burst style content well i mean vine was the big thing right yep and that was really kind of silly of those guys to let vine go uh and now tiktok my my kids are on tiktok all the time and you know i watch the tiktok videos but i've never downloaded the app or tried to make one, but apparently now I'm going to have to, and I haven't looked into Quibi too much, but it does seem very interesting. One of the challenges we have, I think in the cannabis space is if you want to do some cannabis content, a lot of places are still kind of squeamish about it. Like uh, Instagram gets on my case, even if I accidentally, if I accidentally post like uh, a menu board at a club. If I'm in a club taking a picture and the menu board shows the price, Instagram will take that picture down and yell at me. Yeah. Um, I tried to give away a bong one time on Instagram. They're like, no, you can't give away a bong. Well, it's for tobacco use. But they didn't, uh, they didn't, they didn't believe me. And so these are the challenges that I think is, is, is for, for cannabis content creators. I don't think creating the content is that hard, but finding a place to put it out there. I mean, there's weed tube, cannabis there's, club TV. Um, Give uh, it to us, baby. Give it to cannabis club TV. We have our own CMS and CDN delivery, uh, proprietary. We don't get shut down. So give it to us. We could we could talk about it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh my rates are very reasonable, bro. Hey. <laughs> people watch it, dude. That's what's funny. People will watch this content and it's you know, to your point, uh cannabis content is not unlike adult content. Not a lot of places it can live. Yeah. But highly sought after. Right. 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 Pornhub is kicking all the ass right now. Oh. Uh, or licking all the ass. Or both. Both depending. <laughs> You, you, you could probably get your ass licked and kicked on Pornhub, yeah. depending on, on what you like. Sure. What's the one about the guy goes to the doctor because his dick is turning orange? And, what, what? and they run the test and they're like, we don't see anything wrong with you. Have you had any last out changes? He says, well, I lost my job, so well, what are you even doing? I mostly just been sitting home eating Cheetos and watching porn. <laughs> <laughs> Wow, that's what we're paying for. Oh, man. (laughs) 
Hey, what are you doing? What's so? How are you gonna? Yeah, how are you gonna weather this storm? I mean, what are you? I mean, being a guy that's used to performing, you're probably doing a couple sets a week or at least frequently. Like, what? Are, yes. Are you going to launch a TikTok? Are you gonna like pivot? Like, what's what's, uh, what's on the know. future? I would, you know, I was thinking about restarting my podcast, uh, but my podcast is about travel and grief, and so <laughs> you can talk about where like you'd like traveling. to go. You could just change it. Like, this, <laughs> like, <laughs> this week, we're going to discuss my living room. Uh, my first impression is someone should really fucking pick up around here. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. Maybe put some shit away. I mean, it's, it's, uh, everybody's, like you said, the world's, I, I, I hate to say it's taking a shit. I like to look at things like everybody's going to get a chance to get a reset button. It's like, like when you were young and and your girlfriend happened to move away and you really had no choice but you had to break up and it sucked for a minute but yeah. then you realize it wasn't so bad because you found a better girlfriend like i think a lot of people are going to do that with their jobs with life i mean it's going to be it's day six of lockdown and people are losing their ever loving mind right now and listen it's a crisis but it's also an opportunity, right? You can. Right. We don't have to go back to this bullshit capitalism way that we have of making sure that only the richest people get everything and poor people are fucked. I mean, you can see how it's changed uh, when even Republicans are like, we just need to give people some money. I about so fell that, over. Right? Right? We just need to give people some money. And, you know, leftists and, and, and uh, universal basic income supporters have been saying this for years. Listen, the best way to spark an economy is give the money to people who are going to spend it. A billionaire doesn't need another $10,000. They're not going to do shit with it. If you get somebody who doesn't have any money, $10,000, you'll be sparking the economy, right? There's eggs for everybody. People buy a bicycle. Someone gets a phone. There's a computer. Yeah. That's how you get shit bought. And I, I think a lot of these, these people these days who are in charge of things don't really understand how it's supposed to work. They just think as long as maybe they, they should, uh, the economy is fine. Maybe they should play a game of Monopoly. Cause like, even when Monopoly is over, like the game's over when one person has everything and nobody else can participate, yeah. you know what I mean? And, and at that yeah. point you start that the game, game over. Was, uh, that game was designed to show the horrors of capitalism. Right. Yeah. It wasn't, it was supposed to be a warning game. It wasn't just supposed to be a fun game where you get kind of drunk and then you get mad at your friends. It was supposed to be uh, a warning to the evils of capitalism. And, you know, America would just repurpose well, it all the time. You need to tell uh, those five senators that dumped or whoever, that whatever they are, whatever they get paid to do, who dumped their stocks while they were telling all of us that this thing was a hoax, you know, yeah. that, that they just made yeah. their $500 million they got in the bank and they need to make another million. It's just like that they're, that they're not going to pay taxes on because it's going through some bank in the Cayman Islands. And, you know, we just don't get to play uh, by the same just... set of rules. If we all got to play by the same set of yeah. rules... It'd be a different game, but you know, if we don't pay our taxes or we run a red light, shit, we get paid. We have to pay that right. stuff. You know what I mean? And right, they some... capitalize the profits and socialize the losses. Right, all the air, all, all the airlines right now are like, well, we need fifty billion dollars right now. Uh, hey, you know, when they cut all the taxes, you guys bought back all your stock, you used all your cash reserves to buy back your stock. So maybe you should have saved some money. Maybe you can get a second job. Maybe you should lay off those avocado toast. Hey, maybe maybe you maybe just you need to go out of code. business. Maybe you need to go out of business, and somebody else who has the money at the particular moment thinks that they can do maybe it better you do. than you. You know, sorry about that. Maybe you do because they. Yeah. It's yeah. like it's exactly. It's it's so interesting. I feel it's so funny when I see these CEOs like they just had the thing not SoftBank, but what was the uh, I can't remember the name of the company, but the guy fucked up the whole thing and they paid him a billion dollars to oh, go away. Uh, How do you we, get money for fucking we, up? We I've work. I've never gotten money for fucking up. We work. Yeah. 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 Yeah, we work. Yeah, I've never gotten money for fucking up. Whenever I fuck up, I lose money. Yeah. Right? I've never been in a gig where they're like, man, you completely fucked that up. Here's a hundred thousand dollars. Yeah, thanks, bro. Go away. Here's a hundred grand. Right, go away. And and go, go ahead away. and do it again. How do you do that? How do you get in on that? Gig? I don't know, man. I read an article. <laughs> New that, material. Yeah, I read an article that said success is eighty percent luck based and what you're born into. You know, it's like twenty percent of us have yeah. a chance. Like, there's some smart. Like, I'd like to consider ourselves a pretty smart group of guys here. Um, not getting a hundred grand for fucking up is definitely not on my uh, roster at the moment. And I need to figure out how, I mean, everywhere I've fucked up, I've been asked to leave and sometimes maybe give money back for what they've paid me. So I, I don't, I don't understand, uh, you know, that fly. I think we've long since, 
I hope that all of this, first of all, the beautiful thing about this virus is that it's indiscriminate, right? It go, It's not like just, unfortunately, the rich cannot wield it. They're a victim to it as well, and which is going to bring them to a humility point of people. Like, you know, it, it's funny. Policy, you would think. Right. Policy gets passed, though, because, you know, someone could be anti-gay their whole life. As soon as their cousin comes out, next thing you know, they're the biggest proponent for gay rights. And so... You, or they kick their cousin out of their house. Absolutely. And they never talk Both to ways. Again, Both, ways. Both ways. So. But we got to have hope, man. We got to have a little hope in humanity that that people will see the light and try to treat each other fairly. For being in a first world country and driving through downtown L.A. or even in my town, downtown Santa Cruz, and seeing the amount of people, regardless of the choices they've made, living on the street in that fashion is yeah. inhumane. You know, And I'm not saying we got to well, – you know- Go ahead. That's one of the interesting things about this pandemic, though, right? It is kind of forcing authorities to do some shit they should have done a long time ago, right? Seattle's trying to buy a hotel so they can house some homeless people, right, because of a health issue. Uh, Philly has stopped arresting drug, ad- drug addicts for the time being. Alameda County is running people out of jail, yeah. right, who are just there because they can't afford their bail. It's not right. that they're at risk to not show up at court. They just can't afford bail because gas bail is ridiculous. Uh, so – they're doing these things. Uh, L.A. is trying to find housing for the first time in 40 something years. L.A. is trying to house all those people down on Skid Row because it is definitely like Blade Runner in downtown L.A. After, oh, after for dark. real, dude. I used to live down there. Uh, so uh, it is It is interesting to me to see how this is uh, forcing people to do the right thing. And it's a fucked up way to have to do it. But I think if we had been doing the right thing from the beginning, we would have some of these challenges that we're facing right now. Sure. Yep. Good point. Sure. You know. What are you gonna do? Uh, hope that it all works out in the end, right? Amen. Amen. That's all we can do. Do your best. Hope it works out. They say, uh, what do they say? Uh, uh, hope for the best. Plan for the worst. There we go. Are you are you planning for the worst uh, in your consumption right now? Are you getting delivery? You going to the club? What are you doing? Uh, I have a stockpile because the harvest season isn't that far away. So um, uh, I will post a picture on Instagram later. I have a whole drawer full of weed. <laughs> and I was just on the order because so I even bought a little more weed, even though I didn't really think I needed it. Nice. But I bought a little more just to have a variety. So to have some flavors. Um, and, uh, there's, and there's flavors you can get out there. Like you can't get like the Jaeger in Oregon is always better than the Jaeger. The Jaeger. Also, Jaeger. It's, Smells like black licorice in the niece and tastes a little bit like eager myself. It's a Hindu Kush cut uh, that somebody in Southern Oregon found and propagated and made it super nice. And now it's just it's just one of my favorite flavors. It's, it's just a good, it's like a micro brew, right? It's a good local flavor. You can find it. And then also uh, Blue City Diesel is another popular Oregon flavor. So it tastes like blueberries on the inhale and it's got a big diesel exhale and it's a really nice hybrid. Interesting. That sounds yummy. Yeah, I'm, I'm a fan. I have some. Come over. Bring your own pipe. And, you know, my couch is long, so we can sit on either end. <laughs> Dude, you can get two meters apart. Oregon is, like, yeah. I'll, I'll be honest with you, when we were traping through Oregon on our network and putting TVs out there, um, we rolled up on a on a dispensary that had the, uh, I'm, and it's escaping me the name of it right now, but it was literally all black. Like, you thought it was molded weed, but it was the most fire indica I've ever smoked in my life. And it's unfortunate to the Oregon market, you know, because they they produce some of the best weed, and it's just yeah. there's it's like they grow seven the second of, best weed in the world. Second, Seven Eleven up there with close. weed. It's a it's a close second. Oh, and it's so cheap, six dollars a gram. Here's a, a twelve pack of joints for fifteen bucks, and three dollars a doobie, and a hundred. You know, you see the ads: seventy nine dollar ounces, fifty dollar ounces. It's crazy, and it's wow, good weed. It's crazy. It's pretty good. Like this, I mean, you know, it's not the top of the top of the shelf sure. but it's an ounce for 50 bucks you can yeah. smoke bloods all day <laughs> right your whole house can be high for a week all 50 dollars so that's 1250 a roommate yeah oregon's got to get it <laughs> oregon's got to get it straight <laughs> man expensive in Portland. take advantage of that yeah no oregon's nice like, yeah yeah i mean i think oregon did some things and i mean it's, it's a gift and a curse in some way right but yes the weed is very cheap so that's great for the consumer it's a little harder for the farmer because yeah. they're not getting nearly what they used to get. And so now you have to grow more on smaller land or you have to cut your expenses proportionally. So that's a challenge for them. But I also think Oregon 
did it better than California or Washington. But they made the barrier very low. Like it was relatively easy to get a weed license in most counties. You know, they're not here in California where you need a million dollars, half a million dollars to just look at an idea of having a weed club. Right. Yeah, it's going to get interesting and for so sure. That creates, and that creates high prices, which means people will still go to the weed, man. Right? It's just like, I, like here's one of my new jokes, Mark. We'll see how it goes. Uh, I go to the clubs, but I still have a weed, man, right? Because the weed club is not going to front you a sack until payday. Boom! <laughs> <laughs> nice. That's true. <laughs> true. Right? The weed man will front you a sack. <laughs> the weed man will trade I'll you. Probably pay you Tuesday. Weed man will right. trade you weed salmon. Man trade you. Weed man will trade yeah. you all kinds of things. The club ain't gonna trade you. Oh man, I uh, I got a, a a space heater one time when I was hella broke. I like lost my magazine and my job and my house and my girlfriend. I was hella depressed, but it was kind of harvest season, so I had a little bit of weed. And I was in this whole room that didn't have heating, and I traded some weed for a space heater. It was one of the best things I ever did in my life. That's funny. Hey, so it was such a good decision. I still have that space heater. <laughs> it's awesome. It's awesome. Post a picture of that on Instagram, bro. Give it some props. What's that? Put that picture of that space heater up there. <laughs> Come on, man, bro. I'll find it. Take a picture of that space bro, heater and give it give bro, it its due. It's my new it's my new niece, space heaters and fans. <laughs> space heaters and fans on Instagram. That's Just my start new thing. start reviewing followers. Reviewing the space heater market. Um so yeah. Ngayo, thank you so much, dude, for taking some time on yeah. a Saturday. Um fuck man, oh, it's my it, pleasure. Blessing to have the the laughs that we have. I learned that I'm a chuckle fucker. Um and uh, <laughs> I appreciate you, Mark, for jumping on. Um it's our first threesome. Gotcha. We pulled it off mm-hmm. fairly well, I believe. Not very much disappointment, maybe some underperformance at some times, but hey. We did our best. That's all we can ask. Uh, Ungayo, right. where can people follow you on Instagram? Tell us, you know, in 2021 where you're going to be performing and uh, give some shout outs <laughs> if you like. NGAIO420 is the handle on all the social media, right? Ungayo420, because there are 419 other Ungayos. Um, <laughs> you can also, so that's on, that's, I'm mostly on Twitter and Instagram. Uh, I tend to lurk on Snapchat, but you can still find me there. And uh, you can follow my Facebook pages. And you can download my album on all the streaming apps. It's on the Spotify. It's on the title. It's on the the i Apple Music or whatever they call it. Um, Weed and Sex and Weedier and Sexier. And then also I have some YouTube things um, with my homegirl, Olivia Monaghan, where we do stray reviews, and that's called Stay High. And then I have that show on Netflix called Cooking on High. And then also, since you're sitting home, if you download the Daily Bonfire app. Yes, we forgot to we talk about a, that. Let's spend a couple more minutes on that. We'll go a little longer. We're talking longer. about it right now. Yeah, let's talk about it. Let's okay. actually talk about Bonfire. We forgot to discuss yeah. that. Um, go for it. Give us Daily Bonfire. Daily Bonfire is an app. Um, we do a trivia game Monday, Wednesday, and Friday where you can win up to four hundred and twenty dollars by answering cannabis based trivia questions. So it's kinda like HQ, the late great H two trivia, but for weed. Um, and we're also a dispensary finder and if you check in at the dispensary using our app, you can win uh Airbnb gift cards, which would be great when you're trying to escape during the apocalypse. You can also win we had tickets to Coachella, but um you have to wait on that too. But you could win twenty twenty one. Twenty twenty one. Just push it out. Twenty twenty one. Twenty twenty one. Yeah. Well we're gonna be in Barcelona in September is our plan back at the International Cannabis Business Conference. But so yeah, and then, and it also has other things and we're just starting to post a lot of strain reviews on there too and uh, it's another um you can also go on yourself if you if you're uh have uh, downloaded the app and you're signed on, you can post your own stream reviews and have little discussions about things like that too. So it's a really, it's a really, really nice app. I'm really, really enjoying it. And everyone should download it. And since you don't have a job, you might as well play the trivia game and try to win some fucking. It's money. fun, dude. It's definitely go. fun. I've participated, and it you get notified. Oh, right on. You get notified if you download the app, at least on the iPhone, that sends you little push notices, letting you know it's going to be coming on. Um, today I got a little push yeah. notice before I jumped on here to update the app. So you guys are definitely active with it. And again, back to the whole cannabis content thing, not a lot of vehicles out there of 
caliber no. per se. And I, I really, I'm glad we didn't forget to mention the daily bonfire because especially right now you could be coming up, you know, if you get really brushed up on your trivia, you could be coming up 1200 bucks a week. Ain't nobody else paying you 1200 bucks a week. Like Lugayo. Right. Right. That's what I'm saying. Get your hustle off. Dog. You Government's giving you 1200 a month and Gaio could give you 1200 a week. Oh man, exactly. The government should be giving us three thousand dollars a month each. And oh that's yes, where I'm starting my negotiation. At least in California, I mean, right. if you're in Idaho, you don't need as much money as we need to live out here in California. Sorry, it's just right. what it is. No, you know. I, but but still, I feel like you should just give everybody all the money. You know, those guys they, they just pump three trillion dollars into the stock market, and that should disappear in like two. They hours. gave another yeah. billion, right. I think, to the banks you today. Pump, you know, right? If you pump three trillion dollars into the American people, your economy will thrive. Yes. And, you know, it's just, it's just not going to go to all the monopolies. We have to start their own thing. Yeah. You know, we, we got to decentralize some of this shit out here. Is the thing. And that's one of the challenges, and I know we're trying to be wrapping it up, but I think that's one of the challenges that we've seen uh, in the cannabis industry with a lot of these companies going under, looking at you, Medmen, talking about you, or Canopy, all these guys, they show up and try to monopolize what has been one of the greatest decentralized industries of all time well done yep yeah right? no, it's it's uh... no one got too big because if you get too big you go to jail right? but, but everybody got a little bit and everybody a lot of cats did really well and have done they're continuing to do very well by not trying to be greedy what uh my boy two hit mike levin used to always say uh pigs get fat hogs get slaughtered this is very true. I mean, when back in the day when people were running packs and, and things were still somewhat borderline gray, a lot, of, lot more yeah. barbecues, a lot more, you know, cannabis to me is always kind of symbolized family. You know, like I, I smoke joint, right. like I've met so many great people over a joint. I've met so right. many great people right. over, you know, good weed. And no, ain't, you know, you go to a club and someone pass you a joint, which isn't always the best thing to do now, but you take a hit off it. Ain't nobody giving you a, like a beer. No one say, hey, I don't know you do, but here's a shot of tequila because I just want to give you one. You know, it, it doesn't <laughs> happen that way. Sometimes people buy you a drink, but it's sure. different. Yeah. 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 It's a whole different. It's a culture. It's community. You stand in a circle, yeah. which is another there. equality and peerage. Yes, very mm -hmm. much so. Well, you've been listening to us ramble inconsistently here for the last almost hour it's been a pleasure dude to have you on the show and Gaio, and we'll make sure we tag all those pleasure. things and also i am yes. going to push people to go listen i'm a big supporter of artists so i'm going to go download your stuff and i'm going to go watch it and i think uh if more people just threw support out and accolades and you know instead of asking for hookups like hey man hook me up you're never going to have me asking you hey man i'm going to come to your show you think maybe i can get a ticket to get in dude that's your that's oh. how you, that's how you work bro so people don't try yeah. to don't try to chinch yeah. your friends that are artists if you got friends that are musicians or comedians support the arts yeah go see them bro go there buy a beer i generally spend a little money when i'm producing my own shows i try to make the ticket prices very reasonable uh, just so you can't complain. It's like ten dollars, no hollers, man. It's twelve dollars to see a movie. You pay ten bucks to see my goddamn comedy show. Dude, I I, I, I don't, don't mind being put on a list. Don't get me wrong. I like being put on a list. Um, but oh, at, the, you know. at the same time, I I I that's why I'm a chuckle fucker. I like to go out and support comedians that are trying to come up, dude. I remember watching Joe Coy. You should just get that tattoo. Get it tattooed on your neck. You like that? I am. So it's, I'm gonna put the initials <laughs> though because. Fucker. I'm going to put the initials because I do participate in PTA sometimes. So I got to make sure that I don't have any F words on my body, but I am going to put a CF somewhere. <laughs> CF somewhere. It'd be like chocolate freakiness. <laughs> Could be anything, bro. <laughs> Could be anything. All right, guys. I want you to enjoy your weekend. Enjoy your weekend. Smoke lots of weed and uh, don't go outside and hug anybody. No, I'm going to stay away from people, uh, probably mostly on the golf course today. Hey, thanks a lot, you guys. I really appreciate it. Thanks, man. I really appreciate guys. you, too. Appreciate it, brother. That's a wrap. Thank you for listening to this edition of Cannabis Karaoke, another kick-ass podcast about all things cannabis. You can find us on iTunes, Spotify, SoundCloud, and our website, CannabisKaraoke.tv. And if you or someone you know would like to be on the show, please hit the book your interview button on the right. Cannabis Karaoke, grab the mic and tell your story.